you can see, we are going to do deductive logic or deductive reasoning. Uh, logic and reasoning are used interchangeably here and in most other situations. All right. So first, let's uh, we will discuss each one of them. I will come back to this in a little while. First, let's discuss what is logical or what is reasoning. So I think the clue is this word. This word comes from reason. So reasoning or logic, these things have got to do with reasons. Okay. So whenever we are trying to be logical, whenever we are trying to use logic in whichever situation possible, we are trying to come up with reasons. However, logic has got to do with valid reasons or good reasons versus bad reasons. See, reasons can be all sorts. Okay. So for example, reasons can be subjective and reasons can be objective. The difference is that subjective reasons depend on the subject, whereas the objective reasons depend on the object. So they are independent of the subject. In other words, they depend on who is doing it. They, depend, they are independent of who is doing it. They are only dependent on the object of discussion. So subjective reasoning you can or subjective reasons you can call as based on opinions or judgments. Okay. Whereas objective reasons are independent of these and so they are universally applicable rather than depending on the subject. So for example, if I say that somebody is a good actor, whoever you want to name, now that's a subjective uh, statement because somebody else might not like that person and that person doesn't need to have any reasons for liking or disliking. It's just a personal opinion. Whereas if you say that the apple falls because of force of gravity, you can't say that's your opinion because it can be shown that it falls. In fact, gravity can also be measured. So something which is universally applicable is objective, whereas something which differs from person to person is objective. So when we are looking at logic and therefore when we are looking at reasons, we are looking at objective reasons, meaning it does not depend on me or it does not depend on you. It does not differ from person to person. It is true for all of us and that is basically the meaning of good reasons behind something. Reasons which others can also follow or agree to without coming up with things like well that's your opinion. As long as you can come up with reasons which are universally applicable, you are trying to do logic. So let's revise this. Logic or reasoning is the process of coming up with reasons which are good, which can be verified, which can stand scrutiny. All right, that is the meaning of logic or reasoning. <clears throat> now, deductive is to explain this. Let me give you an example. Suppose I say that all roses are red. <clears throat> and then I say X is a rose. And then obviously, therefore, X is red. Now, these two one and two, the official term for them are premises. Premises are nothing but stated facts. Okay, so remember the stated facts. And the third one is known as the conclusion. So, <clears throat> if you look at this, this entire thing in logic is known as an argument. So remember the meaning of the word argument in reasoning and logic is different from everyday use of this term. In everyday use an argument means a difference of opinion, people fighting, quarreling and so on. But in reasoning or in logic an argument is when you reach a conclusion based on some premises. Now if you pay attention, I said pay attention to the fact that stated facts which are stated what stated implies is that it is given to us as a fact it is given to us as a premise it doesn't have to be true that is the difference between facts and truths in logic the difference is that facts may or may not be true so this is obviously not true in real life all of us know that it is not the case that all roses are red roses are of a variety of colors However, in reasoning and logic, it is not important. What is important is that it is given to us. So we have to take this to be true. 
Now that tells me something extremely impo important about logic, which is that logic is not interested in content. It is not interested in what you give. Logic is interested in the process. So it is interested in the method. Okay. And deductive is one type of a method. I'll, I'll come to it in a bit. Okay. So now what is going on here is 1, 2 as the premises are leading to the conclusion 3. This is the method. This is the process used. And this particular, so this is an argument if you remember. Now this particular argument cannot be argued upon. Meaning if I ask you to prove this wrong, you can't do that. The only way you will be able to do that is if I allow you to touch this. Now you are not allowed to touch this in logic. As I said, it is not interested in content. It is interested in the method. Basically what logic is interested in is if one was true and if two was true, would three follow or not? It is not interested in whether one and two are true or not. No, it is interested in if they were true, would three follow? And in this case, the answer is yes. Three necessarily follows. It is necessarily true because of this. So we can call it as logically necessary. LN. LN means logically necessary. So this argument is logically necessary. And if I want to vi visually represent it, this is the way it looks like. From general statements, we are reaching a specific conclusion. This is known as deductive reasoning or deductive logic. Why? Because we are deducing this. Deduce means when you reach a guaranteed sort of a conclusion. When from data, you reach a proper necessary conclusion. So we are deducing this and this is known as deductive logic or deductive reasoning. Okay, so remember this deductive reasoning is when you reach a LN, logically necessary conclusion. Okay, you can also call this as a valid argument, as a valid argument. So valid argument, if you have been following whatever we've done till now, valid argument has got nothing to do with the truths of the premises and therefore of the conclusion. Valid argument is an LN argument. Okay, so that is the meaning of a valid argument. Now pay attention. Suppose I change this form 1, 2 leading to 3. Suppose I change this to 2, 3 leading to 1. Basically what I have done is I have made these into the premises and I have made this into the conclusion. Okay, so does this follow? Basically what is happening is x is a rose, x is red and Therefore, all roses are red. <clears throat> Does this follow? So you will obviously say no, no, it obviously doesn't follow. But let me ask you a question. There are two possibilities. Just like this was logically necessary, we have two possibilities. Logically possible, LP, logically possible, LI, logically impossible. So when you say that no, no, this doesn't work, are you saying LI or are you saying LP? If you think about it, I'm sure all of you will say it is logically possible. So you can't really say no, no, but you will say something like, well, it depends on further information. So this is logically possible. Now, this is an example of what is known as an invalid argument. Okay, so LN argument is a valid argument, which is also known as a deductive argument or deductive logic or deductive reasoning. Invalid argument is both of them. Okay, so invalid argument could be an LP argument or it could be an LI argument. Now this particular form of an argument wherein the conclusion may or may not follow is known as inductive reasoning or inductive logic. Inductive logic or inductive reasoning. So just like deductive is LN, inductive, inductive is not LI, inductive is LP. <clears throat> so this is it looks like this, just like this looks like, sorry, this inductive looks like this. So basically from specific pieces of information, from little bit of data that we have, we extrapolate. We try to make generalizations about how the world works. Now, before you discard it, 
remember most things that we believe in are inductively based they are not based on deductive if maths is the only thing probably which is deductive and that too not all of maths but even other pure sciences like physics chemistry and so on are inductive we get some information or some sort of conclusions about a few things belonging to that type and then we make general generalizations about all things of those types for example I think all of us sort of know that stars are made up of hot gases. Now, if you want to make this like this, basically what you're saying is all stars are made up of hot gases. But how do you know? Have all the stars been checked? No. So then that is inductive. Few stars have been checked, the bare minimum number. And based on that, we have extrapolated. We have generalized that. Therefore, it seems like all stars are made up of hot gases. So pure sciences are also inductive and remember it doesn't have to we don't have to check all because if we think that there are certain standards in the world and similar things behave similarly then of course by checking only a few things we can generalize but remember it is still a generalization it is not deductive all right okay however as you already know we are doing deductive reasoning so we know that in this the answers will always be ln our answers cannot be inductive so because we are doing deductive logic all right so remember this that when we are going to choose answers in deductive logic or deductive reasoning our answers will be ln will be deductive okay valid argument all right now this there is also an official word for this it is obviously an argument, but this type, arguments are of various types as you will also see in critical reasoning, which we will do later. So arguments of this type types are known as syllogisms. Syllogisms. Aristotle is the person who came up with them first, okay, around more than 2000 years back, ancient Greek philosopher. He came up with syllogistic form of reasoning. So they are also known as syllogisms. So just in case you hear the word syllogisms, know what they are talking about. Basically, syllogisms means when two premises are reaching to a conclusion that may or may not be valid. If it is valid, it is deductive. Okay. 